Our next speaker is uh, Professor Hamad Arthur from Pakistan. He's going to talk us on uh, radical prostatectomy for men with uh, low volume uh, hormone resistant prostate cancer. Is there uh, any role? Over to you, sir. Thank you very much, and uh, I'm really grateful to the South Asian Association and the S Sri Lankan Association of Urological Surgeons for a very kind invitation. So I've been asked to talk about radical prostatectomy uh, for men uh, with low volume, high risk prostate cancer. We know that uh, uh, radical prostatectomy is the treatment of choice for intermediate risk uh, patients with organ confined disease, even with high risk patient with organ confined disease. However, its role in high risk and very high risk patient is controversial. Now the definition of high risk uh, and very high risk is different between various urological association and guidelines. So if you look at the NCCN guidelines, it substratifies cancers into high and very high risk. Uh, if you look at the European Association of Urology guidelines uh, and DMECO classification, the high risk patients um, are all related to stage PSA and the grade of the cancer. Now what we're going to do is to look at the, uh, these three criteria on which you classify them into high or very high risk patients, i.e. the PSA level, the uh, histopathological grade or the ISUP grade, and the stage of cancer. So if you look at the patient who have PSA of greater than 20 and who have had a uh, initial uh, therapy as surgery within a multimodal treatment approach, the cancer-specific survival is in 15 years of follow-up could be up to 70%, which, which obviously is, is quite, quite good for uh, such aggressive cancers. Uh, if we specifically look at the pathological grade, well, uh, it is noted that organ-confined disease uh, can be found in up to 30% patients who have a ISUP grade greater than four. So this is Gleason uh, eight and above. Uh, there is significant downstaging, or downgrading. If you look at the pathological specimen from systematic biopsy versus those of the radical prostatectomy specimen. So uh, if it comes out to be ISUP four, Plus, uh, it may not necessarily be a bad cancer, so there is a possibility that you may end up doing radical cystectomy with quite good outcomes. What about nodal disease? Uh, we know that nodal disease is a big no for, uh, for radical prostatectomy. However, in this uh, interesting paper by Stephen Genu from the Leuven Group, 15-year uh, follow-up with clinically N negative disease who had a radical prostatectomy and it came out to be uh, a N1 disease. The cancer-specific and overall survival is in the range of 45 and 42 percent. So uh, not, not that bad. A systematic review by Mara and colleague looking at the 10-year follow-up, the uh, biochemical recurrence-free uh, free rate could be up to 50%. Similarly, cancer-specific survival in the range of 70 to 90%, and overall survival in the range of 60 to 87%. So the conclusion is that not all node-positive patients uh, are similar. And it's a heterogeneous group, uh, and in selected patients, you may consider treatment like radical prostatectomy. Can we improve the outcome by doing some new adjuvant treatment? For example, hormonal therapy. The conventional ADT with bioclutamide, et cetera, have shown lower positive surgical margins and lower cancer volume. However, there is no benefit in hard oncological outcomes in patients who have received uh, the new adjuvant hormonal therapy using the conventional agents. What about androgen receptor signaling inhibition? Well, in uh, non-metastatic HRPC and CRPC, uh, definitely there is a big advantage of using these uh, novel hormonal agents. However, there is a downside to it. 
which means that uh, the pathological specimen of radical prostatectomy after use of neoadjuvant hormonal therapy uh, is difficult. And also, you have a possibility, at least a theoretical possibility, of earlier castrate-resistant the development of earlier castrate-resistant disease if you use neoadjuvant chemotherapy in a multimodal model. Well, uh, about the lymph nodes, uh, we know that uh, radical prostatectomy uh, outcomes, uh, at least in some of the other urological cancers, the outcome are improved by uh, lymph node dissection, but there is no clear evidence in this regard. Uh, PSMA PET is, is better for uh, high-risk cancer than intermediate-risk cancer. However, uh, what is recommended by EAU is to use the nomograms, uh, although they were done in the era of uh, where MPMRI was not that uh, commonly performed, but if there is a, ch a risk of recurrence of nodal disease on these nomograms is uh, greater than 7%, then lymphadenectomy should be done. So in summary, low-volume, high-risk prostate cancer can be treated by radical prostatectomy, provided it is not a T4B disease, uh, and there is no urethral sphincter involvement. The extended pelvic lymphadenotomy should always be performed, and the patient should be warned that uh, it is part of the multimodal treatment in most cases. So if you look at the guidelines, radical prostatectomy for high, very high risk, and locally advanced and not positive disease is one of the options cited by the joint uh, guidelines reported in the EAU 2023. Thank you very much for your attention.